Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. Happy New Year, everybody. Well, we made it through the holidays and I'm kind of happy about that because I always get stressed around the holidays for some reason. But anyway, I hope you had a wonderful time with your family and friends. I hope you had some positive thoughts and set some intentions for 2024. I certainly have. One of my resolutions for this year is to try to be kinder to myself and try to take more breaks because sometimes I think I work a little bit too hard and it's actually something that I can control but for some reason I don't change things and I really should. So anyway that's one of the things I want to do this year. I want to make some changes to try to lighten up my workload because it really has gotten a little bit out of hand unfortunately. But one thing I do enjoy doing is being on YouTube with you because I consider you my family and I absolutely love it. And by the way guys I want to thank you for subscribing to my channel and for following me on this channel all this time. It means the world to me. It really does because I really love doing this for you. I like to share my designs and I like to help people. That's one of my passions. Plus by being on this platform I feel like we're all friends and everybody needs friends. You can never have enough friends. So anyway I got through Christmas okay and um, we had a good time here except for one little tiny thing and you're not going to believe this but my dishwasher had a faulty um, valve that leaked all over my kitchen. So guess what I had in my kitchen? I had a commercial dehumidifier and three floor fans running full blast all throughout Christmas and that whole week. So it was a little bit maddening needless to say. I think the decibels were around 80 something like that so we couldn't do very much we couldn't listen to music we couldn't watch movies we couldn't even have a conversation but I do have some good news the insurance company is going to go ahead and uh, replace our flooring so that's good news it's going to be a little bit inconvenient for about a week because I'm probably gonna to have to go to a hotel with my kitty cats but um, it's gonna be worth it honestly so what else did I do well I celebrated New Year's with my family here at home it was very quiet but we had a good time we always turn on uh, the Times Square show and then what I do is I uh, use an app that plays 12 bongs one bong for every chime of the clock it's kind of like a family tradition it's really funny but anyway each one of us has 12 grapes and we eat one grape per bong and uh, it means that if you, if you can get through the whole 12 grapes it means you're going to have good luck that year. So we always try to get through the whole 12 grapes and we do this every year. The only time that I failed eating the 12 grapes was one year I used a different app and the bongs were too quick and I just couldn't keep up with the bongs. I call them bongs but they're actually chimes. We play the Westminster chimes. So anyway it's a lot of fun and it's a family tradition and we love it. We really do. But anyway I'm actually very glad that the holidays are behind us and we can move on with our regular lives now. And I'm so happy you're here today because we're going to be making that beautiful cluster pendant necklace and earrings to match. And we're going to use the beads that came in the GGC treasure bag which I think the latest one was released in November of last year and it was released just in time for Christmas so a lot of the beads are red and green but we're not going to use red and green today we're going to use blue and clear beads. Another thing I want to do is use gunmetal because I think gunmetal is a really nice color to wear in the winter time and by the way guys if you don't have that treasure bag don't worry about it you can still make this necklace and earring set you're just going to have to find similar beads. In any case I'm going to leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. I'll also leave a link to the GGC treasure bag website in case you're interested and don't forget that I always model my necklaces at the end of the video so stick around for that. So without any further ado let's go ahead and get started. And here we have the GGC treasure bag. The name of this bag is Winter Wonders and it definitely was filled with wintry themed colors. There were greens and reds and some beautiful indigo colored beads as well as very sparkly clear crystals and a little touch of gold as well. These bags always come packed with very long strands. One of them was actually 24 inches long if you can believe that and as always it came with lots of pendants and some findings as well. You definitely get your money's worth with the GGC treasure bags. Now this is not a subscription, it's a limited edition and because it's a limited edition they sell out very quickly. So if you're interested in this bag and you don't want to miss out, what I recommend you do is go to the website and sign up for notifications so the next time a bag gets released you'll be one of the first ones to know about it. And like I said I'll leave a link to the website down below. So let's go ahead and select the materials for today's project. Here are the beads I'm going to be using for today's necklace. I have some glass pearl beads that measure six millimeters in size and the color is indigo. And these are little three millimeter hematite round beads. The color is light gold. And here I have some pentagon faceted crystal beads. They measure six by 5.5 millimeters and they're clear as you can see with an AB finish. And here I have some glass flower beads. They're electroplated and they measure eight by 10 millimeters. Let me show you what else we'll be needing today. 
Here's some items from my stash. These did not come in the Trisha bag. I have some 20 gauge craft wire and it's in a gunmetal color as you can see. And here I have some head pins. They're 22 gauge. They're in a gunmetal color as well. And they measure about one and a half inches. Here I have some chain. It's in a gunmetal color and the lengths are three by five, something like that. But you can use any size link if you want to, as long as it's in a gunmetal color. And here I have a clasp and some jump rings. The small jump ring is five millimeters in size and the larger ones are about six millimeters, maybe a little bit more, 6.5 maybe. And I think that's it. I don't think I need anything else. The only thing that's missing are the earring materials, but I'll bring those out later on. So now that we've gone over all the materials, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by building the pendant and I'm not going to be using all of these beads. I'm only going to need a few of them. But anyways, you can see I have a piece of chain. It measures about two inches, but I'm not going to use the whole thing for the pendant. I'm probably only going to use about five of the links, which is about half. So maybe one inch worth. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to load one of these three millimeter round beads and then a flower bell. like that so that the little round bead sits inside. Using round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the bead like this, kink it, switch to this part of the pin, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, and I'm going to open up this loop now and slide the first link of the chain into the loop. Just like that. And now I'm going to make some wrap loops. So I'm going to grab that loop with some skinny pliers. Like that. And with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and create my wraps. I think I did about two wraps, but you can do as many as you want to. Using flush cutters, I'm going to cut off the excess. And you do want to tuck in any little sharp end that you see. You don't want any sharp ends. So I have my first angle attached. And this is going to be pretty much freestyle. I'm basically going to be attaching beads to those first five links because what I want to do is create like a cluster effect. So let me go ahead and attach another bead. I think I'll attach a pearl bead this time. Once again, I'm going to grab the pin with my round nose pliers, bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, open up the loop a little bit, pick up my work and I'm going to attach it to the next link up like this. Once again, I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in a little sharp end. And now I have two beads attached. So let me go ahead and attach another one now. I think I'm going to do another flower. So let me load one of these round beads, gold beads, and then the flower. Like that. Grab the pin with my round nose pliers, bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, open up my loop, and let's see where I'm going to attach it now. I think I'm going to attach it to the next link up on this side, like this. Let me grab that loop, grab the tail, and do my wraps. Snip off the excess.
tuck in a little end. And now I have three beads. Let me do a faceted crystal now. Same thing, I'm gonna grab the pin at the top of the bead, bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, open up that loop, and let me see now. I think I'll attach it to the same link that I attached the flower just now, but on the opposite side. So let me go ahead and do that. Once again, I'm going to grab that loop. And this is what we have so far. I think it's looking really cute. Let me attach another flower now. Open up that loop, pick up my work, and let me go ahead and attach it to the next link up, maybe on this side. Like that. Grab the loop. Grab the tail and do my wraps. Cut off the excess. And now let me tuck in that sharp end so that's what we have so far. It's pretty repetitive. Let me do a blue bead now. Pick up my work and see which link I'm going to connect it to. And I think I'm going to connect it to the same link that this flower bead is on, but on the opposite side. So let me go ahead and slide it in. Let me grab it with my skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. And that's what we have so far. And that's basically it. You just keep connecting beads to each link until you get the cluster that you want. It's really not that complicated. I usually like to connect two beads per link and each link usually has one flower bead. And on the opposite side, you connect a crystal or a pearl. And I've already connected beads to three links. So I'm gonna keep connecting some more until I use up five links. So to make this video shorter, I'm gonna speed up the film. You're gonna still see the process, but it'll be sped up. Okay, as you can see, I completed my pendant and I think it looks really beautiful. Now, when you go to create yours, don't get too hung up on where you hang the beads because by the time you connect everything and gravity takes over, they're all going to hang down and it's going to look really nice no matter what you do. As long as you connect one flower bead to each one of those five links and then a crystal or a pearl on the opposite side of each one of those links, it's going to look fine. Let me just pick up this piece of wire. So now we're going to work on the strands with the rest of these beads. 
Let me put this off to the side for the time being. Let me move these out of the way because we don't need these anymore. I'm going to use my 20 gauge wire. And here I've cut myself a piece. We're going to create beta components with simple loops for this. So using my flat nose pliers, I'm going to grab the wire about 3 eighths of an inch down, kink it. Using my round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the end, make sure it's flush, and create a loop. You want to make sure your loop is centered and closed, just like that. So now I'm going to load one of these crystals. It's really difficult to see the holes in these, but there it is. Once again, with my flat nose pliers, I'm going to grab the wire right above the bead, like that, line up the bottom loop, kink it, snip off the excess, leaving 3 eighths of an inch, grab the end with my round nose pliers, and create another loop. Make sure it's centered and you want to make sure it's closed as well just like that let me grab it with my flat nose pliers and i'm going to grab this loop now to make sure that they're both lined up so there's one beta component and that's how i'm going to do these as well and i think i have an idea of how many but i'm not sure yet but i'm going to do these off camera to save time and then when i come back i'll show you and we'll connect them and then we'll measure the length so hopefully you'll be able to figure out how many you need for yourself. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, I'm back and I created all my beta components as you can see. I've also connected one strand and I did that because I wanted to find out how many I needed. Now I want my necklace to sit just below the collarbone. So for me it's going to be about 17 inches including the clasp. And this strand measures 8 inches. So by the time I add the pendant, the jump rings and the clasp, it should measure around 17 inches. Obviously, you're going to have to decide how long you want your necklace to be. So you may need more beaded components and more chain. And my bits of chain measure about half an inch, but you can have longer pieces if you want to. But anyway, I have enough beads here for the second strand. I have four of the glass pearl beads and eight of the clear ones. And you can see how I've attached them there. I started with a piece of chain and then a clear bead, a blue bead, another clear bead, and then another piece of chain. And I continued the same pattern all the way down. And I don't think I mentioned why I used the color gun metal for the chain and the wire. The reason I did that is because it makes the beads stand out a little bit more. In other words, it's more subdued. Plus it's a nice color for winter. If I would have used gold or silver, you'd see more of that metal. But by using gun metal, it's a little bit more subdued. So anyway guys, now we're going to attach the beaded components and the chain to form the second strand. And that's very easy to do. I'm going to open up this beaded component this loop, slide a piece of chain into it, like that, close it, I think it opens this way, and now I'm going to slide a blue one in there, and close it. And now let me open up this loop and slide another one of these clear ones and close it. Open up this loop, slide another piece of chain into it and close it. So this is what we have so far. It's pretty easy. And I'm just going to keep connecting these components in that same order. As you can see, now I have two strands, and now I'm ready to attach the pendant. And here it is. 
And I don't think I showed you a close up of how I connected everything. It's a little difficult to see because the beads are kind of sitting on top of each other. But like I explained before, I connected one flower bead to each one of those five links. And then on the other side of the links, I connected either a pearl bead or a crystal bead. It's difficult to see. But anyway, here it is. I think it's really pretty. Now, before I connect these two strands to the pendant, I'm gonna attach a little dangle at the end that's gonna to connect to the pendant. I'll show you what I mean in just a few moments. I've already prepared two pearl beads. Each one is on a head pin. And I've created a loop, but I haven't completed the wraps just yet. So let me go ahead and connect one. I'm gonna open up this loop and slide the end of the strand into it. So I'm sliding the chain the last link of the chain into this loop like this. Let me grab that loop with my skinny pliers. And now I'm gonna grab the tail and create some wraps. So that's one. And now let me attach this other one to the other strand. So now I have a dangle at the end. I'm going to use the jump ring to connect the strands to the pendant. Let me go ahead and open it up. I'm going to pick up the pendant by the chain because it's easier that way. And now I need to find the link that has the two dangles at the top of the pendant, which is this one right here. So now it's hooked on as you can see. And now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the strands. So I'm gonna connect the jump ring to the first link here, the one that has the little dangle, like this. And now I'm gonna connect this one to the other side. Let me see if I can do it, it's a little tricky. So there it is. I'm gonna grab it and close it up the best way I can. We definitely don't want anything to slide out. I think that's pretty good. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna remove the excess chain, this piece right here. Let me just double check to make sure I open up the correct link. And I think it's this one right here. And you can either cut them or open them. It's up to you. I try to open them whenever possible to save my cutters. So there's my beautiful pendant. And the reason I added those two little dangles there is to make it look a little bit more full at the top. That's really the only reason, but you don't have to. So now we just have to attach the clasp. Here are two jump rings. They're six millimeters in size. And here's a clasp. Let me go ahead and open one. I'm gonna connect the clasp. And now I'm gonna connect it to one of the strands. And close it up. And now let me open up this jump ring. And connect it to the other strand. Like that and close it up. And 
this is my pretty romantic winter necklace. I think it's absolutely adorable. I hope you like it as well. And I'd like to go ahead and model it for you. But before I do that, I want to make a quick pair of earrings. So let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the earrings. As you can see, I've already made one. Let me show you. I connected the dangles with jump rings. I didn't use chain, but as you can see, it has a flower bead at the bottom, and then it has four dangles, two blue ones and two clear ones, and then it has this main bead here. This one came from the treasure bag. It's a triple A grade crystal bicone. It measures 13 by 10 millimeters. And as you can see, the color is clear. I've already mounted one on wire. It just has simple loops, as you can see. And I've already created four of the dangles. I still need to do this one. So let me show you how to do that. This is a flat head pin, just like I've been using. I'm gonna slide the bead onto it like this. And now I'm gonna grab it with my round nose pliers at the top of the bead kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. And now I'm going to create some wraps. So I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, just like I've been doing, grab the tail and create some wraps. Oops. And now let me snip off the excess. Tuck in that little sharp end. So there's my fifth dangle. And I don't know what this piece of wire is doing here because I've already mounted that bead. So let me put it away. Let me just move this earring out of the way. Here's the five millimeter jump ring. Let me open it up. I'm going to connect one of the blue beads first and then the flower bead and then a crystal like that and now let me close it up let me just make sure that jump ring is nice and closed and now I'm going to open up the loop of this beta component. Slide one of these beads onto it. And it really doesn't matter which one. And now this one here, the one I just created. And this part's a little tricky because I need to make sure that I have a dangle on either side of that jump ring. Let me use pliers. So there's my jump ring. And I have a dangle on either side. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. And I'm going to connect it to this loop. Now the other dangle. Just like that. Let me close it up. And I'll show you how it hangs. This is what it looks like. So it really doesn't matter in which order you connect those colors. So now I'm going to open up this loop. Slide the ear wire hook into it and close it up. So now we have a cute pair of earrings to match the necklace. Let me go ahead and get the necklace and I'll arrange everything on my mat. So here's the entire set. I think it's very pretty. And like I said before, it's very romantic. And can you envision it in different colors? For example, in the springtime, you could replace the blue beads with either pink beads or pale green beads. Or if you were making this for a bride, you could use white pearls. That would be very pretty as well. Of course, you'd have to change the chain. I'd probably use silver in that case. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, I'd like to go ahead and model this for you. So let me go ahead and put it on and I'll see you in a few moments.
Do you like this necklace? I absolutely love it. I think it's really, really pretty. I think it's a little bit on the dainty side. What do you think? I'd love to hear what you think about it. If you have some time, please leave some comments down below. I really appreciate that. So anyway, guys, I hope I've inspired you. I hope you can make your own necklace and earring set. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day. Happy New Year again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.